My name is Robert Gay Schofield. I work in the user interface department at Wolfram, and my talk is entitled Wolfram Player for iOS. So I'm going to be giving my talk using the Wolfram Player app. And I'll start just by saying it's here. Um, in beta. <laughs> so we've been working on this for a very long time, um, and uh, we're very happy that we've uh, finally made it to this point where we are uh, ready for people outside the company to start using the app, start testing it, uh, giving us some feedback so we can finally wrap things up and get it onto the App Store and onto all of our customers' iPads. So. Our users have been asking uh, for this sort of thing, a way to view and interact with CDF documents on iOS, um, and mo more specifically on iPad, um, and that's what we are doing now. So Wolfram Player for iPad um, is available as of today. Um, we are taking uh, users' names and email addresses to get them signed up and into the beta program uh, so we can get the beta app on their devices as soon as possible. We plan to make the app available for free once it's finished. And the free app will um, display arbitrary CDF documents statically, um, which means uh, not really any of the dynamic interactivity stuff. Um, if you have an enterprise CDF license and you create enterprise CDF files, you can deploy those to uh, Wolfram Player for iOS. And all the interactivity will be there even in the free app. And we will have an optional in-app purchase for a reasonable price yet to be determined that will enable full dynamic interactivity, uh, all the manipulates you want in your CDF files uh, on your iPad. During the beta period, uh, the in-app purchase is not hooked up, so all the interactivity is going to be free during the beta period. So this is a native app, uh, and one of the most important things uh, that you can do with this app is open your CDF files. And where do you get your CDF files? Anywhere on the system. Uh, if they come to you through email, uh, you can tap on them in the mail app, and they will open up in Wolfram Player. You can open them from Dropbox, from iCloud Drive. Uh, you can download them from the web. Uh, anywhere that you can interact with files on iOS, there's a way to get them into Wolfram Player. And on top of that, it will automatically sync with your Wolfram Cloud account if you log in. Uh, so all of your Wolfram Cloud files will be there, uh, things from wolframcloud.com or things that you save to the Wolfram Cloud from a desktop version of Mathematica. Um, and that's the way that I uh, made this presentation, for example, because this app doesn't allow editing. It's just a player. So I uh, you know, wrote this document on my laptop, saved it to Wolfram Cloud, and just opened it directly, and here it is. So I'm going to uh, take a, a moment to show a few of these things. I'm going to drop out of my presentation here. I'm going to go back to uh, the home screen of the app. Um, I have you know, one file stored locally on this device right now. And I am logged into my Wolfram Cloud account. And here's my Wolfram Cloud files. I can add another Wolfram Cloud account. You can um, have an arbitrary number of cloud accounts. Uh, and they can even be on different cloud servers. So if you are have an account on the wolframcloud.com. That's where it goes by default. But if you have a private cloud, uh, you can just change the uh, server that you're logging into. Uh, multiple accounts is very nice. You can import files from other data providers on the system. So right now, I have just a few of them. I'm going to click on iCloud Drive. And I'm going to find a, a document that I saved in my documents directory on my laptop, which syncs over iCloud Drive. And it's in this folder. Here it is. I'm just going to tap on it. And here it is on my iPad. So this is a file that I downloaded from the demonstrations project onto my computer. So we can do this other ways. I can drop out of the Wolfram Player app. And I can go to Dropbox. And I have uh, some, a CDF file stored here. Uh, Dropbox doesn't know how to preview it. But I can. Export it from Dropbox, and it will ask me how do I want to open it. I'm going to open it in an app. I'm going to choose Wolfram Player, and there it is. 
Okay, and this is another file that I just got from the demonstrations project and I saved it to my Dropbox account. And then one more, I'm gonna open up my email here and somebody um, who happens to have the identical name as me sent me <laughs> a CDF file in email and I wanna see what's in this CDF file, so I'm just gonna tap on it. And I'm going to choose import with Wolfram Player. And there we go, here's this file. So it's very easy to get your CDF files uh, from anywhere on your iPad, uh, any cloud storage service into the app uh, so you can view it and start interacting with it right away. Now I'm gonna go back to my presentation here which is stored on wolfandcloud.com. All right, so in addition to um, all the ways directly on the iPad that you can get files, you can also sync with iTunes and there's an interface in iTunes where you can add documents to the Wolfram Player uh, app from iTunes on your computer. So some of the nice things about this, um, it supports local computation. So there is a Wolfram kernel running on my iPad right now uh, that will handle all of the uh, manipulate stuff. So uh, when you change the sliders and manipulate and the expressions are reevaluating, that's all happening locally. You don't need to be connected to the network for this to work. Um, and being an iOS app, uh, we put a, a great deal of attention into uh, getting the right user interface, the right user experience for this platform. Uh, and so one of the things that means is that when we have uh, buttons, hyperlinks, controls, all these sorts of things, they all have touch targets that are finger sized. Uh, so you're not gonna be uh, trying you know, really hard to hit the right thing uh, because it was sized for a, a very precise pointing device like a mouse cursor on a, a laptop or desktop. Um, all our controls are very large. You can touch them with your finger. Uh, we have pinch to zoom. Um, both in uh, things like 3D graphics, but also in the notebook as a whole. So I can just pinch and zoom this um, if I wanna see part of it larger. And uh, one of the important things is that when we were dealing with manipulates, uh, we discovered very quickly that um, the default positioning of manipulates that we use on desktop and laptop computers with all of the controls right above the content doesn't work that well when you're doing um, the interaction with your hands and you touch the screen, your hand covers all the content if you're, if you're touching right above it. So what we've done is we've taken these controls by default and we've put them at the bottom of the screen um, so you're not covering any of the content that you're trying to interact with. And I'll show you that in just a moment. But we have all of the features that you would expect to find in uh, CDF files and Mathematica notebooks. We have typesetting, it's very nice looking and you can zoom in as far as you want and it still looks very nice um, very high resolution output from our typesetting. Same goes for graphics. We have very nice looking 2D graphics and also with 3D graphics. As you've come to expect uh, from Mathematica and uh, CDF player on the desktop, 3D graphics are rotatable. So I can take my finger and touch it and move the graphic around. And this one has some nice transparency to it and it's still uh, rotates very smoothly. Uh, one additional uh, feature that we've added to the specific app is that we can also take the graphic and I can toss it and it will keep going with uh, until uh, it will slow down and stop eventually. We support the dynamic features that you've come to expect in Mathematica content. Um, so I can, I have this checkbox hooked up to a variable that is also being used to control the background of this graphic. And when I change the checkbox, the graphics, the graphic changes as well. And manipulate is uh, built on top of dynamic. We support manipulate as well. And so this is a 3D graphic which I can rotate. And if I tap on it, I get some controls at the bottom of the screen. This one just has one slider. I can take the slider and I can drag the slider and I can see my content change appropriately. So this was built for touch screens, which means we needed to do uh, a few things differently. Um, things like mouse position don't make a whole lot of sense in this case. 
Um, but we do have a new function called touch position, which makes more sense. And um, mouse position so supports one point because we only ever have one mouse uh, on these desktop and laptop computers. Uh, whereas on touch screens, I can have 10, possibly more uh, points. Uh, and so if I put my finger on the screen, if I put two down, I get two points and three and four and five. And I can just keep putting more fingers down on the screen and get uh, some more points for that. So you can do some interesting things with uh, the new touch position function. And um, if you need to do something custom with the layout of manipulate controls, we support some new functionality there as well. If you have uh, controls that are very tall, for example, and you don't necessarily want them at the bottom of the screen uh, because maybe it would take up too much vertical space, we have a new option to manipulate called touch screen control placement. And you can um, move the touch screen controls to different sides of the screen. So in this case, I have a vertical slider. And rather than taking up all of the space at the bottom for this very tall, thin thing, I just moved it over to the right side. And so here's my manipulate. My controls are over on the right side. I have this vertical slider. And I can uh, slide this. And the manipulate controls aren't covering very much of the screen. So I'll talk real quick about the uh, limitation, some of the limitations of this product. Um, as I mentioned earlier, it supports uh, read-only documents. You cannot create new documents. You cannot edit documents. Uh, this is a player product, Wolfram Player. Um, if you want to create and edit documents on an iPad, we do have an app that's already available called Wolfram Cloud that does just that. Um, Wolfram Cloud uh, is good uh, for that sort of thing. Uh, the downside is that you do need to be connected to the network because it is uh, communicating with wolframcloud.com uh, in order to do all of the work that, it's, uh, that the app does. So the app is relatively large. It's a couple hundred megabytes, um, about the size of a, you know, a typical game you would see these days. It does have a full Wolfram engine um, embedded inside of it. There's a handful of features that aren't quite supported yet. Um, some things like Event Handler don't necessarily make a lot of sense. Um, and some things like Tab View, uh, we just haven't finished yet. Uh, and there are other pieces of functionality, things like JLink and Database Link, which rely on Java, func um, Java uh, language features and functionality that simply will never be available on iOS. Performance, uh, this is not a desktop class uh, computer, but it's uh, getting closer and closer every year. Uh, so the CPU is a little bit slower, but it's acceptable in many cases. And um, it has a limited amount of RAM. And if uh, you were at John's talk, you heard him mention earlier that there's no virtual memory on these devices. So when it's out of RAM, the app just uh, basically uh, gets killed by the operating system. So uh, if you are doing computations that require huge amounts of RAM, uh, that could be a problem. You may need to, uh, to cut that back a little bit. And um, the newer Apple iPads have more RAM than the older ones do. Uh, so newer devices are obviously going to work a lot better um, for this sort of app than the older devices. Other limitations, uh, we don't currently support uh, the option to restart uh, the Wolfram engine. Um, the app itself can be killed, uh, but the, the Wolfram engine can't be killed separately. And uh, currently, in the beta, we're supporting this for iPad only. We have uh, everything ready to go on iPhones. Um, we just need to work out some of the user interface, user experience issues, um, dealing with the much, much smaller screen on phones than on the iPad. Uh, that's something that we expect to support in the future but it is not ready at this time. So getting to the details of the beta test. We are inviting conference attendees and premier service customers to uh, beta test Wolfram Player for iOS. There's a URL here which you can make note of or uh, perhaps get from this notebook uh, after the, the conference is over. It's wolfram.com slash iOS beta. 
you can go there to register for the beta program. It is going to be run through Apple's test flight system, uh, which means uh, you will give us uh, your name and email address. And through test flight, you will receive an email that, with instructions on how to get the app installed on your iPad. Uh, we are most interested in hearing from you to know whether you encounter any problems in the documents that you view, um, the sorts of things that we're uh, not necessarily expecting, but half expecting. Um, maybe some crashes, uh, maybe some rendering glitches, things which don't look the same on uh, the iPad as they do on the desktop computer. Or in cases where um, the app has unexpectedly poor performance, um, not necessarily re related to just being on a slower machine with less RAM, but something that's you know, really out of whack. Uh, so in such cases, uh, the most helpful thing to us will be to actually have a, a, a copy of the notebook or CDF file that displays this sort of problem. Um, and if that's not possible, you know, we can work uh, together to maybe figure out a way to narrow it down a little bit so that we can you know, get a reproducible case that we can test against and uh, fix. So I'm just going to click on this link real quick. I'm going to open it up in web browser. And here's this page. Uh, it will describe a little bit about the, the beta test program and then has a form at the bottom where you can enter your name and email address. Um, so we can compile uh, all the, the testers together, get them entered into the test flight system, and uh, get those instructions sent out as soon as possible. So with that, that is going to wrap up my presentation. And I'd be happy to answer your questions if you have any.